Well, good Tuesday afternoon to you guys, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're coming here from. If you're in the east part of the United States, it's about, what, 7 o'clock. If you're on the west coast, then... I suppose it's a couple hours later, but uh, wherever you are, I'm glad you could be with us this afternoon as we jump into a special webinar that we're doing called Three Income Strategies to Thrive in Bear Markets. Three Income Strategies to Thrive in Bear Markets. Now, that may seem like a... um, you know, a difficult subject. If you look back at the market for the last few months here, you know, it looks like we're just, uh, you know, hauling away in a new bull market that's going to continue forever. But we're going to talk about that today. And uh, what I want to make sure, and the reason we do these bear market webinars in the middle of bull markets is we want to make sure that you're prepared when the market does turn back over, which we do think is going to happen sooner than later. So uh, that's the nature of today's webinar, three income strategies to thrive in bear markets. And with that said, If I can get my slides to go forward, here we go. Uh, Here's our agenda. We're going to talk about the fear that comes with a bear market and why bear markets happen so quickly. We're going to talk about three strategies for the bear markets, and then I'll share with you how you can learn some more. So let's talk about the fear associated with bear markets. You know, whenever we talk about bear markets, uh, bear markets are a scary place, and it's not because they're called bear, and it's not because a bear is going to jump out of the, the woods and scare you. They're a scary place because equity disappears, and it disappears appears very quickly. In 2008, over $2 trillion were lost between January and the bottom of the market during the 2008 financial crisis. Now, that seems like a lot of money. And it is a lot of money, especially if you were one of the millions of Americans who had your uh, retirement in mutual funds and other various vehicles that were overexposed to equities. Because whenever you get into that type of a of a exposure where you you are long in your stocks or you're long in your mutual funds and you can't get out quickly, a bear market not only is it a scary place, but it can wipe you out. Now, 2008 was a difficult time, and I don't want to um, you know skimp over what a very difficult time 2008 was. But how many of you remember the first two weeks of 2016? Did you realize, I don't know if you know this or not, but in the first two weeks of this year, one and a half trillion dollars was lost in two weeks. That's almost as much as 2008 in in totality. And we saw that much uh, wiped out in a period of two weeks as we opened up 2016. The beginning of this year was the worst start to a year in the history of the United States stock market. Now, since that time, we've bounced back. However, if you go back and you look at the statistics and you look at the history, um, cyclically speaking, that is a word, cyclically, that means in cycles, um, Uh, According to the cycles, whenever you've got a presidential term where the president is in their second term, which is what we have right now with Obama, that year historically is a bearish year consistently. This goes back to like the Great Depression. It goes goes back for many, many um, cycles. And if it doesn't happen that year, then it happens the following year, the first year, the next uh, next president. And so um, the other adage goes, as January goes, so goes the rest of the year. And so here we are, we're sitting in April, coming up into May, and things are looking a little bit more optimistic. But if you look at the chart, we actually have not gotten back to higher highs. We've not even gotten back to where we were back in May of last year. We are still technically in a secular bear market. It's just that we're in a bullish bounce that is part of that bear market at this time. And so we are very concerned about what the rest of 2016 is going to look like. And what I want to make sure is I want to make sure that you're prepared just in case we do get into the next wave of a bear market and that you actually have a clue what's going on. Uh, For so many people, bear markets are a scary place. Wealth gets wiped out very, very quickly. And to a lot of people, some of you who are here, the pressure becomes so great that a lot of people just choose to either sell at the bottom because they can't handle it anymore, or they end up delaying their retirement because the pain is so great. And so if you can identify with that, then you've come to the right place because, um, you know, what we're going to talk about is not just how you can survive a bear market, but how you can thrive throughout the bear market. While a lot of people lose their money in bear markets, and I see that Mike has written in a question, he says, was the money lost or did it go to someone else's pocket? And the answer, Mike, is the money was lost. 
You know, let's use this analogy right here, Mike. Mike, if you have a house that you purchased for $200,000 and the market value of that house increases to $400,000, on paper, what has your net worth become? You started off with a $200,000 house, and over a period of time, it's now worth $400,000. On paper, you have a net worth of $400,000. But Mike, you don't leave the house, and you don't sell the house, but the market changes. Housing values go down, and a few years later, that house is now worth $225,000. Mike, did you lose net worth on paper? The answer is, yeah, you lost $175,000. Did somebody else get that? And the answer is no. Nobody else got it. Whenever you own an equity or you own, a, in that case, a stock or in the case of a house, you own the asset of the house or you own anything else, if the market value of that item goes down, then your wealth goes down with it. If you own dollars, let's say you own $100,000 bills, Mike, and uh, over a period of time, the value of the dollar goes down. You may have $100,000 bills, but those $100,000 don't have as much buying power because the value has gone down. And so if you think of everything in our lives as an asset, and if you think of it as an exchange... So we're exchanging dollars for something else. Whenever you exchange dollars for a house, you're hoping that the house will stay the same market value or go higher. That's an expectation. And if the house goes higher on paper, you have more wealth. If you buy gold, you've exchanged dollars for gold. And if the gold market price goes higher, then your wealth has gone higher. But if the gold market price goes down, then your wealth has gone down. And the same thing happens with your equities. So if you own, uh, if you have a million dollars in the stock market and the market as a whole takes a 15% hit and your equities that you own have gone down and you didn't cash them out, Mike, then yes, your money really was lost. You have lost that value. Now, the interesting thing, Mike, since you bring that up, while most people look at a bear market and they see it as a scary place, there's a lot of other people that look at it and they see it as a new opportunity. Not only is it a new opportunity, but it's a big opportunity. For example, in 2007 and 2008, while the overall market lost over $2 trillion, there was a man who's fairly famous now, John Paulson, hedge fund manager. He made over $4 billion during that crisis. How was he able to, to make $4 billion while the market's going down? Well, he bought a different kind of asset. He was able to take different types of trades that would go up in a bear market rather than trades that would go down. So Mike, he exchanged his dollars for an investment that went up during the bear market. Consequently, the wealth wasn't transferred to John Paulson. He just was able to make money during that time period. During the same time period, Daily Mail reports that Warren Buffett made over $10 billion in the crash. Now, that's fascinating, isn't it? So what you see is you see that there are opportunities out there. There are opportunities. It's just that we have to have the eyes to see them, and we have to have the, the courage to take the opportunities. And we also have to know the strategies to apply. So here's the reality check. The reality check is most people are afraid of bear markets, but for those who have the willingness to see it, the bear markets can provide huge opportunities. So what we're going to do over the next few minutes together, and this is going to last maybe 30 to 45 minutes, uh, we're going to go through three different bear market strategies, different ways that you can survive a bear market in some of the cases, and in some of the cases, you can actually thrive throughout the bear market. So strategy number one is to use put options to hedge your stock. Okay, now I know a lot of people think options are super scary. A lot of people think options are super risky, and other people think that options are just a waste of money. But I want to suggest to you that when you use options the right way, put options or call options, they can be one of the best investments that you make in either a bull or a bear market. Options are a great investment tool and a great trading tool that we can use to increase the value of our portfolios. And in many cases, not only do they not take on new risk, but they actually lower the risk that we currently have on the table. So let me show you an example of this. Let's say that we're trading the uh, the market as a whole. So the broad market, the, the S&P 500, uh, let's say it's trading around 2000. It's a little bit higher than that right now, but 
according to this screenshot, you know, we're right at 1900. You got a nice little bull trend that's uh, humming along here, and things are looking pretty good. But the concern you have, Mike, is after this long bull market, you're worried about what would happen if the market were to sell off. What happens if the market sells off? And so what I want to suggest to you is to consider using a put option as an insurance policy. Now, most of you already understand what insurance policies are. Insurance policies are something, some, simply something that offsets the risk that we've got on the table. We're familiar with insurance policies for our house. We're familiar with insurance policies for our automobiles. So why is it that such a few number of people uh, you know, percentage-wise, would use any kind of an insurance policy for their retirement. I mean, after all, most people have more saved in their retirement than they have in an automobile, but they would never, ever, in a hundred years, let their auto insurance lapse. Most people have as much in retirement as they have in their house, possibly more, but they wouldn't let their homeowner's insurance lapse. So why would the average person not? buy insurance on their retirement investments in the stock market? I think it's only one of two things. Either number one, they think it's too expensive, or number two, they simply don't know that they can do it. That's the only thing that I can deduce down. Uh, otherwise, it just makes no sense to, to have long-term investments in the stock market and not have some short sort of insurance in place in case the market sells off. So one of those possibilities is what we call put options. Put options give the buyer of that option the right to sell a stock for a certain price. The right to sell the stock for a certain price. For those of you who are not familiar with options, this is an insurance policy. That's all it is. What, what happens if you buy an uh, insurance policy for your automobile? When you buy an insurance pol policy for your automobile, you have the right, if you have an accident, to call your auto insurer, State Farm, Allstate, whoever it is, to call them and say, hey, insurance agent, I just had a little 16-year-old kid sideswipe me, and my brand new BMW is now worthless. Uh, I want you to pay for it. And your insurance company is either going to pay to return it to like new or they're going to pay to buy you a new car because that's what your policy says, minus a deductible. You guys understand that principle? Well, that's exactly what a put option does. A put option gives the buyer the right to sell the stock for a certain price. So if you own shares at $100 a share, yeah, sorry about that. My pen messed up. And the stock runs down to, say, $50 a share. You can go back in time and say, hey, broker, I want to sell for $100 a share. I own the right to do that. Ah, that sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? So who's this going to help? Well, it's going to help two types of investors. Number one, it's going to help the long-term investor who wants to hold your position for a long time. It's going to help the long-term investor who wants to hold the position for a long time. If you're a short-term, one-week swing trader, this is not a strategy for you. But if you have long-term retirement cash sitting aside, if it's sitting in an IRA, if it's in mutual funds, whatever, you qualify. You want to hold those positions for a long time. The other type of trade or investor it's going to help is those of you who have investments that are tied up where you don't have control. It's in a mutual fund. It's in a 401k that you don't have access to control. And you recognize that the bear market might be coming and you want to hedge yourself, you want to protect yourself, but you don't have direct control. In either one of these two situations, using put options is a possibility of how you can offset some of that risk. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's take a hypothetical situation. Let's say you have a $100,000 account. You don't manage it or you don't want to close the position. So those are the, the, that's, that's the scenario. If, you're, if you don't fit that, then this isn't a strategy for you. But many of you fit this strategy, this uh, criteria. How many of you have uh, you know, a sizable retirement account and either you don't manage it or you're holding the positions for a long time for capital gain reasons or whatever? You just don't get in and out of trades frequently. How many of you fit that criteria? If that's you, then this is a good strategy for you, okay? So you have a long-term view. You believe it's worth holding on to, 
but you're concerned about a market correction. So let's walk through this scenario. Let's look at using the spiders. If this is an exchange traded fund. We're going to look at using the spiders to manage this risk. And what we're going to do is instead of trading the spiders directly, we're going to buy put options on the spiders. So we're going to come over here and we're going to look at the trade. Right now, the trade is trading up here around $185 a share. Okay, so if the stock's at 185 and we're worried about a sell-off, then what we want to do is we want to come over here and hedge ourselves in the event that the trade goes down and it goes down drastically. Now, why would I buy a hedge at 180 if the stock's at 185? For the same reason that you buy homeowners or auto insurance with a deductible. You buy automotive insurance with a deductible because the premium is so much cheaper. Could you buy an auto insurance policy where if your car's worth, you know, 50,000 that they would actually pay you 52,000 if you wrecked it? Well, you probably could buy that policy, but the premium on it would be just through the roof and it wouldn't be worth it. Nobody would write that policy for you. And you wouldn't want to pay for it. The same is true if you're wanting to hedge your stock portfolio. You don't want to buy an in the money put option as a hedge, but rather you want to buy what we call an out of the money put option as a hedge. What that does is it sets you up similar to having a deductible. So let's say the stock's trading at 185. We're going to say at 180, our hedge is going to kick in. Now, here's the cost of the 180 put with three to four months to expiration it's about $3.10. So your 180 spiders are going to cost $3.10 per share. Let's say that you needed to insure $100,000. That's going to take you about 10 contracts, which is 1,000 shares at a 50% delta. We'll talk about that when we talk more about you know, setting these up more directly. But just take these numbers for now. All right, let's see what happens. A month later, the S&P drops, and of course, the spiders go down with it. Spiders go down about $10. So your 180 spiders are now going to be worth about $6.80. You paid $3.10 or $3,100, and now with this new drop, those options are worth $6.80 at $6,800. Take out your $3,100 that you paid for it, and you've got a $3,700 profit. Now, that doesn't mean you made $3,700. What it means is you made $3,700 on the hedge. What that does for your overall portfolio is it helps to offset your overall loss. The same way that homeowner's insurance offsets the loss of your house or car insurance offsets the loss of your automobile. The greater your deductible, the greater your loss is going to be and the lower your premium. The lower your deductible, the higher the premium you're going to pay, and the lower your loss. So there is an exchange that you have to, to deal with there. But let's look at how this would have worked in this particular scenario. If you had $100,000 in the market, in a broad market account, and you were to hedge it with the spiders, a 5% sell-off would have looked like a $5,000 loss to you. Your outcome would have been a 5% loss or $5,000 drawdown. If you use the puts as a hedge, however, you make $3,700 and that offsets your drawdown to only $1,300, a 1.3% drawdown instead of a 5%. You still ended up losing a little bit of money, but you didn't lose nearly as much money as you could have lost had you not had the hedge in place. You see what's going on here? So what you do, you don't have to be hedged the whole time. That's not necessarily what you need to do. But whenever you start to see the market, uh, the bearish market, you know, looking a little more concerning and you start to have those warning signs going off, that's when you want to start thinking about buying the hedge. Tim says, sure, uh, not Tim, but, uh, oh, shoot, I seem to have lost it here. I thought it was Tim. Somebody said the reason people don't, uh, it was John, the reason people don't, don't buy insurance is because it costs money. Well, John, if you just stay insured all the time, constantly buying puts to hedge your position, yeah, it's going to probably cost you more over time. But John, what if you only bought those hedges when you were really worried about the market going down? You could keep your long-term positions and you could be prepared in the event that the bear market really hits and it hits hard. 
All right, now, what would happen, this is a hedging scenario, okay? And this is a way that you can offset your risk. It doesn't make you rich, but it offsets your risk so that at the end of the bear market, you've got you know a, a few percentage points of drawdown as opposed to 5% or 10%, or in the case of 2008, you know, 45 and 50%. And by the way, this ratio, about one to five, you know, you end up losing about, um, you know, about a fifth of what everybody else does when you hedge yourself this way. And, um, you know, my friends who are fund managers who, who really hedge their clients' portfolios, this is about what they see. So, for example, uh, my friend Dan, who manages money up in Michigan, um, you know, during the 2008 crisis, when everybody else was losing 45 and 50 percent, his worst drawdown that year was 8 percent because he had hedged very well throughout the year. So in 2008, he looked like a genius. He only lost 8 percent where everybody else was losing 45 and 50 percent. And that's what I'm trying to, to help you guys understand. The hedge concept here is an offset of risk. It's not a removal of all risk. You might still have some, some drawdown, but it just won't be as bad as it could be. Now, what would happen if you didn't have those, the long positions at all? What if you were to just buy the puts? Could you do that? The answer is yes. If you didn't have the long positions, you could have just turned this into a pure profit play by using the same tool. Use those put options instead of hedging your position. You're just buying them as a short-term trade, and now that thirty-seven hundred percent or thirty-seven hundred dollar profit uh, looks like cash in your pants. I mean, this is this is a true profit now, and it actually represents one hundred nineteen percent ROI if you weren't hedging something. If you're hedging, it's just offsetting your your larger portfolio. But if you're not hedging something, then you could have actually used that same strategy to actually make money during that bear market. And so that's one way that you could profit in a bear market. Um, let me show you another way. Uh, how many of you from, are familiar with selling in the money covered calls as a form of hedging? This is another form of hedging. A little different than buying the puts. Uh, you're getting paid on the front end. But let's start with the, uh, the, con the core concepts here, the concepts of cost basis and covered calls. So cost basis, this is the overall price that you end up paying to get into a position. And obviously, uh, no matter who you are, you want to lower your cost basis. And so one of the tools that we use for that is your covered call. Uh, with a covered call, you sell a call option against the shares you own, and then you get paid a premium for that call. That's the nature of a call option. If the time expires, you keep the stock, or if the time expires and the stock has run up, then you end up selling the shares at the strike price. So there's always a risk you'll get called out. But in the process, you still are guaranteed to keep that premium. And that's why so many people love to write covered calls. Covered calls are a great, uh, great little tool for bringing in consistent cash flow. And the people who really like to write these uh, what they've decided is they would rather get paid consistently than to maybe have some of the big, um, you know, big some of the big windfall profits. And so I, there's not a right or wrong here. Getting paid consistently over time is good. Getting windfall profits is good. Both are good. Uh, one's not right over the other. But for those of you who are a little bit older, you're looking to create the income from the market, maybe more so than to play the lottery, um, the covered call can be a great strategy for you. One little drawdown here is it has to be done in 100 share increments. Not a huge drawdown, uh, but that is one criteria you need to recognize. Let's talk about it on the chart so you can see what's going on. Let's take a look at American Express. And let's say that you purchased American Express at this market price in 94.91. So the stock's trading at 94.91. Let's say you go out and you buy a hundred shares, so you, you invest nine thousand four hundred ninety one dollars in this trade. Now, for our example, let's go write a covered call against those shares. What we're going to do is we're going to write four weeks of time to expiration, and we're going to sell one or two strike prices out of the money. One or two strike prices out of the money. So let's come over to our option chain. We bought the stock at ninety four ninety one. So we want to either sell the ninety five or ninety six or ninety seven dollar call. Let's go at least two strike prices out of the money. Let's do ninety six. Uh, if you want to do the ninety seven dollar, that's fine. You would make more on the eventual close if you ended up selling at ninety seven. Make less premium if you sell it. The, the $96 call, then you make more premium. But if you get called out, then you have less capital gain. So there's not a right or wrong here. It just, it is what it is. All right. So you can look at the spread here and you can see that the spread for the 96 is 92 cents by $1.04. Let's go in the middle. 
which is something we can do. Typically, you would sell at the, uh, the bid price. Um, but if you've got a spread that's, that's kind of widened out like this one is, you can actually put a limit order in there to sell right in the middle. And so let's do that. Let's assume that we're going to sell this sucker for $1. So first you go buy the stock and then we turn around and we're going to sell that $96 call and we're going to bring in a dollar premium. How do I know that? Because we just looked at the, the quotes on it. The quotes were 92 by 104. We decided that we're going to put a limit order for a dollar. And that's going to give us $100. This is money to keep. It comes into our account. Now, what has happened here is we've just sold somebody else the right to buy American Express at $96 a share. So the stock runs up then we're going to have to sell at 96. Let me ask you a question. Is $96 selling at 96, does that make you money, Mike? Does that make you money? Yes. If you bought at 94.91, it makes you money. Does bringing in a dollar per share make you money? Yes, it makes you money. So even if you get called out of this trade, you are still going to make money regardless. All right, so let's go, go forward here and let's look at how we're using this to lower our cost basis for starters. So the first thing we did is we purchased the stock for $94.91. We turn right around, we sell the call, the $96 call for a dollar per share. That gives us a hundred bucks in our pants. All right, now this is yours to keep regardless of what happens. So your cost basis has just been lowered. Now, if you sell even if you sold at $94.91, it would be like you had purchased at $93.91. You just pulled a dollar per share off the table. Your new cost basis is $93.91. Now, what happens next month? You guys should understand that, right? We, we bought at $94.91. We bring in a dollar. It's guaranteed income because we're selling the premium. Now, if the stock goes up, we sell it at 96, but no matter what, we keep the $100, so our cost basis has effectively been lowered to 93.91. Okay, now let's watch what happens next month. Next month, what happens to the stock? Well, it could go up, it could go down. So, do these have the same outcome? The answer is no. If it goes up, one thing happens. If it goes down or it stays the same price, something else happens. Let's look at both of the scenarios. If it goes up in price, we're going to sell at $96. Aaron, I know you wanted to keep the stock, but you bought it at $94.91. You already brought in $100 on this. Your cost basis is $93.91. If you have to sell at $96, Aaron, are you making money on this? Yes, because your cost basis was $93.91. You're making $209 in the first month. It's not a ton of money, but here's what it turns into. It is 2.2% ROI, and you did that in four weeks. If you turned around, Aaron, and did the exact same thing next month, and the next month, and the next month, over the course of a year, that's 24%. That's better than almost any mutual fund is going to give you. That, that's not bad, is it? So I'm talking to Aaron because he's emailed me a few times about this, and he kind of hates it when his stock gets called away from him. But Aaron, you're still making money, and that's the important thing. And you can turn around, and you can do that trade again and again, and again. Now, what happens if the stock does not go up? What happens if it stays the same price or goes down? Well, our cost basis after one month has been lowered to $93.91. After the second month, we turn around, we do it again, we sell another call, bring in about a dollar per share. Our cost basis now has dropped down to $92.91. So now we could actually sell at $92.91 and effectively break even on the trade because we've lowered our cost basis. Or we can keep writing covered calls on it and keep lowering the cost basis. So here's what happens over the course of a year. If you did this right here that I just showed, up, showed you here, if you were to just bring in on this trade $100 a month, 
after a year, your cumulative premium would be about $1,200. That means you have recovered about 12%, a little over 12% of your initial investment. You've been paid back that money. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is your cost basis has been reduced down to $82.91. That's another way to look at it. Any way you look at it, you've been getting money in every month. So rather than just buying a stock and holding it and hoping and praying that it goes higher, you're selling call options on it and you're bringing money in, you're lowering your cost basis, you're getting repaid some of that initial capital. And eventually, if you do this long enough, eventually your cost basis is zero or it's negative and anything, any value in there is pure profit. So that's a really great way uh, to, to be positioned in a trade, obviously. Now, what if you know, Aaron, what if you knew that the trade was going to go down? So this scenario that I've laid out for you here is kind of a benign scenario, kind of neutral. We're writing out of the money covered calls, but we're talking about bear markets here. So what if you know that the bear market is coming and you know that this trade is about to go down. Instead of selling an out-of-the-money call option, what if you were to sell an in-the-money call option? This is a secret uh, that you know some fund managers use. A lot of people use this little uh, technique. Instead of selling short, instead of buying puts, they go with the guaranteed profit. What's the guaranteed profit? Well, instead of selling a call option up here, what if we sell a $60 call option while the stock's trading at, you know, $67.50 and you bring in a guaranteed $7.50, 100% intrinsic value. You say, why would I do that? Well, here's why. If you believe that this trade is going down, then over the next few weeks, it should go down. And your option, if uh, assuming that the trade expires out of the money, your option will expire worthless and you keep that $7.50. So while the bear market was evolving, you were making money on those calls all the way down. It's a different way of hedging. It's a way of putting time demand in your favor. And it's a way of lowering your cost basis while the market is falling. So let's say that you did this particular trade. Let's say that you had purchased Halliburton up here in the 70s. And as it starts to roll over, you sold a $60 call. You brought in $7.50. So you lowered your cost basis. Now the stock's trading at five fifty-five. dollars well, If you bought up here at $70, you, know, you had a $15 down from where you'd initially bought, but you offset half of that and you still own the stock. It's a little different than buying the hedge. You know, Jonathan, if you don't want to spend the money to buy the put option, you can receive the money to sell an in-the-money call, and the worst-case scenario is you get called out. So let's look at how this could happen. I, I put a big exclamation point as a danger. It's not really that dangerous. The first thing that you need to know about this strategy is it's not a complete hedge. If you want a complete hedge, you're going to have to pay for it, John and it's gonna look a lot like a put option. That's gonna be the complete hedge, where it really offsets all of your risk no matter how low the stock goes. But selling the in-the-money call can be a way that you can lower your cost basis and make out better in a bear market. Another danger is that you've got the risk of being called out of the trade while the trade is still in the money. Now, if the market is selling off rapidly, that's probably not going to happen, but it can happen and you may end up, you know, getting called out and, and you won't make as much as maybe you could have made. Here's another danger you've got with this trade. And if you're going to implement it, you got to really think through this. If you sell the strike price below your purchase price, you could end up getting called out for a loss. So my, my hypothetical, I threw out, you know, what if you bought Halliburton at 70 and then you sell a $60, um, you know, in the money call for a 750 premium. Well, you would actually over, over the course of that trade, if you got called out, end up losing $2 and 50 cents a share. So there is a possibility if you set the trade up, you know, just awkward enough that you could end up getting called out for a loss. 
And another downside here is you could have a negative tax implication, could push you over into a short-term tax rate instead of the longer-term capital gains rate. So those are some risks of selling the, uh, the covered call uh, as an in-the-money call. But outside of some of those risks, this is another way that you can offset a lot of your drawdown in a bear market, especially if you're a longer-term trader, you're owning stock, you're holding those positions a little bit longer, and you're just wanting a way that you can draw uh, some, of that, some of that risk off the table. Okay? Are some of you getting some good ideas here? I see Aaron has written in some good, good uh, keys here. So uh, at least I'm, I'm giving Aaron some ideas. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, what you were saying there, George. I'm sure I missed part of a conversation. All right, let's continue. Let's talk about the bear call spread, and then I'll, uh, I'll try to get this class wrapped up tonight. And uh, you guys can go watch uh, the hockey playoffs because I know some of you, Aaron, are looking forward to that. You guys, I'm not picking on Aaron. I just happen to know a lot about him because he's emailed me a lot recently. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about the bear call spread. So here's another bear market strategy that you can implement. And this is one that you might want to implement if you do not own any stock. So, you know, the first two were really hedging type of techniques that you can use in a bear market. This is, this is really just a pure profit play. This is uh, not, you don't need to own the stock at all to do what I'm going to show you. It builds on that last strategy, the idea of the covered call. But instead of doing a covered call, what if we were to sell a naked call? Okay, so let's look at Apple here. We notice that Apple's going down. It's already got all the moving average crosses that suggest this is a bear market. And you're thinking, I'd like to sell some 120 call options. These are going to be naked options. You're not covered in this position. And you're assuming that the stock's going to go down. The problem with this trade is there is an unlimited risk factor. If Apple runs higher, then you're going to have an obligation to sell somebody Apple at 120 bucks a share. And if you don't own Apple, then you've got to buy it at a higher price. So here's the risk of the uncovered call. You short the 120 call thinking that the stock is going to go down. If stock goes down, great. But now that the stock runs up, let's say it's trading at 130, you sold somebody else the right to buy it. You're obligated to sell it. You got to sell it at 120, but you don't own it. What do you do? You have to go on the open market at 130 and buy the freaking stock so that you can immediately turn around and sell it for 120. You say, whoa, I don't want to do that. I know you don't. I know you don't. So what could we do? Well, what if we bought an insurance policy on the insurance policy that we sold? So you buy a 121 call, for example. Now you have the right to buy the stock at 121. You sell somebody else the right to buy it at 120, and you buy the right to buy it at 121. Now the worst thing that happens is the stock runs up, and from 121 higher, you've already locked in your right to buy at 121, so the most risk you've got on the table is a dollar. Ah. We're using our options to protect ourselves from ourselves. Let's look at the option chain and see how this would work. So you're going to go out and, and spend, or sorry, receive. You're going to sell is what I'm trying to say. You're going to sell the 120 call, and you're going to receive 63 cents. How do I know that? Because it's on the option chain. Now we're going to buy the 121 call and receive 40, uh, sorry, we're going to spend now 45 cents. I'll get this right. Let me say that all in one sentence so that you know that I know what I'm talking about. We're going to sell the 120, receive 63 cents. That's the bid price. We're going to buy the 121 call and we're going to spend 45 cents. The difference is 18 cents. Now, 18 cents may not sound a lot, but if you do this times 1,000 shares, that's 10 contracts. That's $180. It's going to take 82 cents in capital. That works out to a return on your investment in a couple of weeks on this trade of almost 22%. That, that is a fantastic trade. If you maybe didn't do quite as well, maybe you spread it out a little bit, you might lower that ROI. Or maybe it takes four weeks to get a 20%. Maybe you get 15%. Different trades are going to pay different amounts. 
But how many of you, forget the 18 cents, how many of you would put up 82 cents to make a 21.9% return on your trade in three or four weeks? That's what this trade does. It just so happens when you break it down to per share, it's 82 cents in capital requirements and 18 cents in profit. When you multiply that out times several, several shares or several thousand shares, and it's a legitimate profit. Now, let's see what can happen with this trade. Here's the cool thing. If the trade goes down, if the stock goes down, that's what you want, you're going to keep all of your 18 cents and your profit. If the stock goes sideways, you're going to keep all of your 18 cents and your profit. If the stock comes up just a little bit and it closes at or below your strike price of 120, you're going to keep all 18 cents as your profit. Now, if the stock goes above 120 and closes at expiration anywhere between 120 and 121, you will have a, a loss on this trade that is proportional. The first 18 cents is still cutting into your profit, but you're still profitable. After 18 cents, you're losing money until you get to 121. Anything above 121 is hedged. That's your maximum risk on the trade. This strategy is what we call a bear call spread. It is a limited risk and a limited reward. And the best part about it is you make money if the stock goes down, you make money if the stock goes sideways, and you make money if the stock goes up just a little bit. So you got two and a half out of three directions that the trade goes. I say that this has an 80% chance of being right. Or sorry, 80% chance of making money. And if you put a good strategy of analysis with it, a good process of analysis to go with your strategy, you know, if you, you do an analysis process that gives you an 80% accurate trade and you do a strategy that gives you 80% profitability consistently, um, then uh, you know, your chances of having a long string of really profitable trades is pretty darn high. So what's my point here? My point is bear markets can provide some phenomenal opportunities for us. And what typically happens is people get scared and they panic and they sell in the middle of the worst of the worst, or they get scared and they get paralyzed and they can't recognize opportunity. They just don't know what to do with it. And for the majority of market participants, bear markets are an awful place to live because they simply don't know what they're doing. But what I want to suggest is if you prepare for the bear market, the bear market, as you've already seen tonight, can actually be a really, really good place to make money. You can make money by buying put options and trading them long. You can make money by doing bear call spreads. There's other strategies. And I showed you two strategies tonight using puts as a hedge and selling in the money calls, where even if you hold your long stock positions, you can still hedge that and you don't have to have the pain that so many other people take during a bear market. So the question is, are you prepared for the next bear market? Well, I got good news for you. If you are a TradeSmart student, if you're already a member of TradeSmart, uh, you've got access to some of the best training in bear markets that there is that's out there. And of course, we talk about it in Power Trader and we talk about it in our trading labs every week. And I see a lot of names here, Aaron and Christy and uh, Mike, I mean, a bunch of you here, you're already members. I also have some of you here who are not members. And I want to encourage you, as well as those of you who are currently members, to think about working through our Foundations of Stocks and Options certification. We are launching this certification in a week. A week from today, actually, is going to be the first day. And in the Foundation of Stocks and Options program, as many of you already know, what we teach is we teach the core of how professionals trade for consistent income. We teach the basic process, an analyze the trade, determine the direction of the trade, apply a strategy, and manage your risk. If you can do those four things, there's no reason that any of you have to suffer in a bear market. And so what the Foundations program is going to do is we're going to teach you how to look at the market, identify that a bear market is highly probable, 
so that you can identify the direction of the trade. With that information, you can apply one of the strategies that we looked at tonight or one of the other strategies that we teach. And then in the process, you start to work on managing your risk. Now, what's different in the certification and just the foundations program? Well, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But in general, for those of you who've been through foundations, it's the same content. The big distinction is that we've raised the bar a little bit so that you can really give yourself um, you know, confidence that you know the material. And we're going to do that through the, uh, the type of the, the pedagogy of how we're going to teach it, as well as the tests and the quizzes. But once you've learned how to analyze, once you've learned how to determine the direction of the trade, once you've learned how to apply a winning strategy and to manage your risk, you can then turn around, pick more winning trades, risk less per trade, and have the confidence that you're really set up for every market, which ultimately is going to lead you to making more money. That's what everybody here wants. I mean, nobody's here because you want to make less money. You're here because you want to make more money. And you're here because you want to make money during a bear market. All right. So the Foundations Program, for those of you who are not familiar with it, this is the program that we've taught to, what, tens of thousands of people now around the world. And we use this as our core program uh, to teach you how to trade every market condition. Now, with this certification, let me tell you some of the distinctions that are going to happen. We're going to have the eight classes that you're used to having with your regular foundations program, all available on demand for your immediate viewing. Those of you who are members, you've already got this. But here's the things that, that are going to change a little bit. We're adding four live trading labs as a support. So you're going to be able to watch all the classes like you normally do. And then come to the trading labs on Monday night. We'll do an abbreviated teaching. I'm not going to teach through everything. I'll teach through a little bit of it. And then we'll open it up for question and answer. So what this is going to do is it's going to put an agenda to our trading labs. Instead of just being a free-for-all, these four trading labs back-to-back, -back, we're going to go through in, in number one, we're going to go through class one and two. Number two, we're going to go class three and four. Number three, we're going to go class four and five and on and on. So that when you come to the trading lab, it's more of a regular classroom where you've done your homework, you've watched the classes, you've taken the quizzes, and now you're showing up ready with the questions in hand that you need, that you need to get answered, I should say. Now, to help you, uh, you know, bring some revelation to what questions you may need, I've put together a series of new quizzes. Um, some of you might have taken our really, really old quizzes that were not uh, all that in a bag of chips. These new quizzes, I've put a lot of time into these to really make sure that we're asking the questions and we're trying to bring to your awareness the content that maybe you're weak in. Hopefully, you fly through the quiz and you do everything great, but I'm pretty confident you're going to get tripped up on some of it. You're not going to quite have the answer, and that's going to be the kind of question that you'll bring to the trading lab so that you can really dig in and uncover the dark corners where you've been maybe not getting all the details. And that's, that's what my outcome here is. Now, for those of you who are not current members, this is all new to you. And uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for you to jump in and, and uh, you know, sign up as a member or just take the class as a one-off. You can do that as well. And then once we're done with the whole thing, we're going to have a final exam. And if you pass the final exam, then you get your certificate of completion. So there's your certification. All right, now, why would you want this? Why would a certification be any different than just the regular foundations? Well, you know, the theory here is that you're going to be able to test your knowledge. Um, you know, up until now, we've had the classes available, but we've received a lot of feedback from many of you saying, I sure wish I had a way to know my progress. So what the certification is, is it is a way for us to test and to measure your progress along the way. That's going to give you the confidence that you've been looking for saying, OK, I got the comprehension. I passed the test. I know what I'm doing. Or it may illuminate some areas where you need some improvement. And, you know, whenever you're passing the, the areas, then you know you're ready to move on. If you're not passing the areas, you know where we need to go dig a little bit deeper and uh, bring some clarification to it. And then, of course, once you're done with it and you have a piece of paper, then you got a pride saying, OK, I've worked through that. I can check that off. The outcome here is to, uh, to get you guys a little bit more confidence so that you're not wondering where you go when you're learning, but rather you can say, okay, I've been through foundations, I've, I've checked it off, I passed the exam, I really get the core content there. And that's the outcome. So here's what you're going to get in the level one certification. And then, you know, later this summer, we'll look at the level two and level threes. But with a level one, we're going to start at the beginning when you buy and sell so that you have the confidence to get into the trades. 
And for a lot of you, that's where you've been stuck. You know, I, I, maybe you've been through foundations, but you're still stuck. I don't necessarily know when to buy and sell. We're going to really dig into that so you really know where do I buy, where do I sell. Uh, those of you who've been stuck with bear markets, we're going to really learn how to trade bull and bear markets so you can make money regardless of what the economic situation is. Some of you have been hung up on stock options. We're going to talk about stock options so you can learn to make your, your profits with better leverage, faster leverage. Some of you have been wanting to do trader uh, covered calls, but you haven't necessarily known where to start with that. So we're going to talk about trading covered calls so you can make that monthly income. Uh, we're going to go through your trading plan so you know what to do before it happens. We're going to go through the, through the analysis process so you can really determine the direction of the trade. We're going to go through the trend identification. If you were in my trading lab last night, you know how important the trend identification Identification is. This is so that you can trade the most uh, the most profitable part of that trend, whatever that's going to be. And then, of course, we're going to make sure that you understand working with stop orders so you can protect your capital and you can lower your risk. All right. Now, there's a couple ways that you can get this certification. If you are currently a gold or platinum member, it is included with your gold and platinum membership. So if you're a current gold or platinum member, you, you don't need to do anything. You just need to, to show up and do the work. Okay, and I see a lot of you in here, you're already gold or platinum members, you just need to show up and do the work. If you're not currently a gold or platinum member, there's two ways you can get your certification. One way is the one-time purchase. This is just like taking the, the one program. You don't necessarily want to be a Trade Smart member. You just want to do the one program. That's fine. It's $4.95. Uh, normally, we sell this for $8.95, but this is part of our certification promotion. You do own it for life. You can watch the videos as many times as you want. Uh, you get the four trading labs. You get the quizzes, the final exam, the certification, everything that you need for your certification, all for the $4.95 one-time purchase price. Now, for those of you who are wanting to be members, the other way that you can get the certification is to become a platinum member. And you can do that for the regular 119 monthly membership price. And with this, you get the platinum membership, you get the entire foundations certification, plus you get the three times a week trading labs, the power trader, the mastery classes, the weekly trade ideas, the sentiment survey, the entire trade smart course library, which looks a whole lot like all of these programs, fibs, tick by tick, trading plans, credit spreads, the Forex program, options made simple, everything that is in our our library, which if you were to go through and buy them individually, you would end up spending more than $12,000 on it. So the 119 price is, uh, you know, it's a steal. It's the best, most economical way to get into uh, all this training. Now, we do have something a little bit special going on just right now. Because we're launching the certification, one of the things that we've made available is a, um, just until uh, I think it's till Thursday. I'm not exactly sure of the day, so forgive me for not having that. But uh, you can do an $89 platinum membership. So basically, we're giving you a platinum membership for the gold price. And so this is only because we're launching the certification. Um, and when you do that, then you've locked that price in. So you can be a platinum member for $89 until you decide that you want to cancel. Now, if you want to do that, just go over to tradesmartu.com slash foundations. That's where this offer is. Tradesmartu.com slash foundations. And uh, you can click in there and you can get this special pricing. Let me give you an idea of what some people have done with the foundations program. So Ruth, uh, one of our longtime students here now, but uh, she says, thanks to your program, foundations of stocks and options, I've been paying for my younger son's current college tuition and my older son's college loans since last summer. And she goes on to say that she's been making between five and $8,000 a month with the techniques that she learned in foundations of stocks and options. And by the way, we verified that. And uh, not only did she not just do it once, like she said in the email, since last summer. I mean, she's been doing it month over month. This is consistent results. And so that's what I'm wanting to illustrate here. Uh, she goes on to say, I'm very glad I found you guys. Learning to trade options has taken away a lot of the anxiety of paying for my son's college tuition and retirement. And that's where a lot of you are right now. Some of you have been trading for a while and maybe you haven't quite found your groove. Uh, maybe you just kind of need to, you know, pull the curtain back and illuminate some of the things that you've been doing wrong. You know, for most of you, it's probably one or two little tweaks, and it takes you from being a trader who's very frustrated to being a trader who is consistently seeing the kind of results that you want. And so I want to encourage you to take the foundation certification. This is a great opportunity to uh, to get in as a full member 
for just $89 a month. Or if you want to do the uh, one-time purchase, you can just get the certification for $4.95. And uh, either way, we'll be happy to have you. Now, let me let you know what's going to happen. This is going to start next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is when you're going to start the cycle of watching the videos and taking the quizzes. And then uh, the following Monday, which is a week from this coming Monday, we will have our first trading lab where we actually go through the Foundations Level 1 content and we start uh, doing all the support trading labs to go with it. Okay, so that's where we are. And um, if you want to get signed up for that, go to tradesmartu.com slash foundations. All right, I told you I'd try to have you out of here in less than an hour. So I'm sitting at the 55-minute mark, which means I have kept my promise. If there's any questions I can answer for you, uh, feel free to um, type them in here and I'll answer your questions. Otherwise, if you need to leave, then I certainly understand. Uh, Erno asked the question. He says, do you have to participate in the live classes for the certification? No, Erno, you do not. If you can't um, come to the live class, that's okay. But you do need to take the quizzes and the exam. The exam being the big thing, Erno. So if you can only come to some of the trading labs, that's okay. It's for your benefit, not for mine. Uh, what I really need to make sure that you can do is that you really have a good handle on the content. That that's what um, that's what I want you to. That, that's what I want to test on you and make sure you've really got that. And so long as. Um, you've got a good handle on the content, then, you know, I want to give you the certification. And, and what that does is it gives you the confidence, Erno, to move on to level two, level three, and then some of the advanced programs that we've got as you're starting to really build up your trading knowledge. Okay, so that's the content there, or the concept there. Um, Aaron says, what time of day are these going to be? Aaron, it's going to be my regular Monday night webinar, my Monday night trading lab. We're just going to put this agenda in that time slot. So that means every Monday night at 8 Eastern. Uh, Aaron, you're on the West Coast, so that would be, um, what, 5 o'clock for you, Aaron? I guess it'd be 5 o'clock. So, uh, you know, just in time to get the webinar over with so you can go Go watch hockey, stuff like that. Just perfect for you, right? All right. Um, Mike says, is it possible to make $10,000 a month? Mike, it is. It is entirely possible. Um, it comes down to a couple of things. One thing is how much capital you've got. Another thing is how well prepared you are. In fi fact, Mike, just a week ago, uh, I taught a special webinar like this called How to Make Five to Ten Thousand Dollars a Month Trading the Stock Market. Did you see that webinar, Mike? I mean, it was it was literally the that was the name of it. Make make five to ten thousand a month trading the, the the stock market. Okay, you saw it. So uh, yes, it is entirely possible. Can I guarantee it? No, I can't guarantee anything. I mean, if you come out here and you got two hundred dollars. You're, I can guarantee you're probably not going to make $10,000 a month every month if you've only got $200 in trading capital. So, so I, I can't tell you that. Um, but, you know, how much capital you have is going to be a component of it. Uh, and then, you know, the bigger component, capital is important, but the bigger component is your own personal psychology and your own personal skill set. And so with the right training and the right skills, it is entirely possible to make consistent income in the stock market. Uh, it's also possible to have the right training, the right skills, and to sabotage your trades. And um, you know that's why the psychology is an important component as well. Rhonda says, I did not. Rhonda, you mean you did not see the webinar last week? Is that what you're saying, Rhonda? Let me see if I can find a link to that really fast here. If any of you missed that webinar last week, um, it is available. I got to find a link to it. We put it on our YouTube page, which you could go find it there. Or if you just want to make life really, really simple, all you have to do is click on the link that I'm about to find and give to you. Uh oh. There we go. Here it is. So here you guys go. In case you missed it last week, voila. Also, in case you missed it, I'm going to put into your um, little chat panel here the link 
where you can get yourself signed up. Um, oops, I think I did it twice. But that's where you can click click to get signed up for the certification if you're not uh, signed up. Now, if you're already a member, you're just going to sign up for the regular Trading Lab link. And you don't have to do anything. You just need to do that. And if you're already a member, you'll be getting emails about it. And you, you just watch the um, watch the videos. And this coming week in the Trading Lab, this coming Monday, I'll, I'll lay out the entire syllabus for you so you know exactly what to do as part of your regular Trading Lab. So nothing will change there. Brad says, how smart of capital can, how small of capital can you start trading with and building more capital to finally achieve the large money? Brad, I, I highly suggest uh, three to 5,000 as a starting point. Now, if you don't have 3,000 right now, that's okay. Uh, you can save up and you can get there. And really, the most effective traders are the ones who learn to trade while they're saving their money. And they use all the practice trading and the virtual trading techniques that we teach so that when you have your capital, you actually know what to do with it. Uh, the least effective traders are the ones that, uh, you know, they show up and they've already got a lot of capital and it's burning a hole in their little pockets and uh, they don't really want to learn. They really want to make the money without learning. And uh, they tend to burn through a lot of capital before they learn. And that's one of the lessons they have to learn. And that's okay too. It's not my preference, but you know, everybody learns at the pace that you learn at, and that's that's good. But Brad, I am going to suggest, you know, th much less than three grand. You just don't have enough room to make a mistake. And, uh, you know, in the world of, of trading, there's going to be bad trades. You're going to have trades that, that just don't, don't pan out the way you want. You're going to have more than one of those. Out of any given 10 trades, you'll probably have four or five, uh, maybe three, but, you know, certainly a handful that are not going to play out the way you want. And you got to learn to, to do the money management and you got to learn how to play the odds. And if you've only got $2,000, then your risk, um, you know, is going to get a little out of whack. So three to five grand is a good starting point. If you got 10, that's better. If you have, uh, if you've never traded personally and you got more than 10, I would say limit yourself, you know, put, put five to 10 into the market, work with that. And then after you've proven to yourself that you can do it, then you can go add more to it if you want to. Does that help, Brad? Okay. Uh, Joseph asked, Jeremy, why did you guys stop doing market updates three times a week? Well, Joseph, we didn't have a lot of people that were watching them through our YouTube channel. And we started doing them in our trading labs instead. So we still do them uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Joseph. Plus, we do the Sunday night Power Trader market update. We just kind of stopped doing them through uh, YouTube because we just didn't have that many people watching them, and it was uh, taking you know more time than we were seeing a, a uh, benefit from. But Joseph, if you want the market updates, we still do them. It's just part of Trading Labs, and, and we do those on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we do them every week. Brad, uh, if you have tax questions, you need to talk to an accountant about that. I'm not the guy to ask about um, about tax issues. It's going to change state to state. Your personal situation is different. I'm just not the one to talk to about that. And, uh, you know, all I'm going to do if I talk taxes is I'm going to get really, really angry at the government. So let's just keep me happy and let's pretend and... Pretend that taxes don't exist, and then maybe we can all be happy. Otherwise, you can get me off on all sorts of bad tangents. All right, any other questions I can answer? If not, then I'll let you guys go. I want to thank Brian for being here as my moderator. He stepped up at the last minute. Chris uh, had something come up, and, uh, and Brian was able to jump in, so I really appreciate that. I know he did a great job, as always. I want to thank all of you for being here. And um, those of you who are members of Trade Smart already, I look forward to seeing you in our uh, Sunday night Power Trader. And of course, uh, Alfonso still got another trading lab this week. So I'll see you guys in uh, Power Trader Sunday night, my trading lab Monday, and uh, Alfonso's this coming Thursday. And for the rest of you, I look forward to seeing you in the certification whenever you guys decide to jump into that. Again, we're going to start this cycle of certification coming up next week. So if you want to jump on, this is the time to do it. You can become a Platinum member for just $89. All right. Uh, for the rest of you, have a wonderful evening and uh, happy trading to all of you.
Good night.